Good day. I've just been watering the saplings that we put in last year. As you can see, or hopefully can see, most of them have actually taken. I think there's only about six or seven that haven't, which is great. Bit of plastic there, which I have to pick up, a Skips, KP Skips bag. But yeah, um, of course, watering is needed along here. It's, it's along a pavement, so the pavement gets warm. And we haven't had rain for quite some time, so I decided to give them a good water, which is great. It really is quite dry. We've not had any substantive rain for quite a, a while now. And there's a breeze which itself is really quite drying. Not only drying for the plants, but also drying for the soil, the surface of the soil. I need to get back into this bed that I did some initial work on last week where I was sowing climbing beans. None are up yet and uh, just carry on weeding. But what I have noticed is that I'm going to be harvesting our scapes on our hard neck garlic. So hard neck garlic they form scapes naturally, which are these. This is effectively a seed head if it was allowed to go to seed. So it would flower, be pollinated, and then go to a seed head. And you know when they're ready to harvest because they do a complete circle like this. And if they go beyond this point and start straightening out, that's when they start going to flower and the scape itself will be rather more tough than it is at the moment and then what I would normally do I have learnt from experience is leave these in for another month but as you can see the leaves are beginning to to die back on all of them so yeah I think this one here actually I've left go a bit too long I think it's it's neck is beginning to straighten so I'm going to pick that one off but yeah they all need harvesting and that's fine but I would normally leave these in for another month but I I sort of think they're virtually ready to come out maybe we'll lift one later in the week and see how they're doing the thing is I don't want any sort of significant rain or watering of these because I want the bulb below the surface to be drying because that's what's happening at the moment. If you water your garlic at this point you're likely to um, bring about rot which of course is not good for storage. In fact you can't then store. I think when we harvested last year we had quite a lot that was um, with uh, white rot so yeah anyway yes nice to see the scapes forming and you can see there the beans are beginning to form i mean they're beginning to if i can get into this one they're beginning to start fattening up quite nicely i think uh a week or so yet and I would normally be snipping out the growing tips but you know what the black fly that is here seems to be doing very little damage at the moment so I'm just spraying it at the moment or spraying them off so I'll be doing that shortly to these yeah but as you can see, no, absolutely no ladybirds, which is very bizarre. Our tomatoes, or the surviving tomatoes, which have been out for about five days now, are really firming up in this breeze that we're getting. 
pretty strong plants even the younger ones at the back there which are the ones that we don't know which variety they are so yeah they're they're beginning to firm up and what i've also noticed if we come over here when i was clearing a bed the other day i noticed oh, can you see here and here where am i pointing yeah here and here those are volunteer tomato plants so i'm giving them a water and weeding around them i will i mean how many are there there one two three four five at the moment and once they're larger i will be taking them out and planting them into maybe into this bed but into a different bed because obviously i don't want them to grow to full size where they are because that's five tomatoes that if they did all grow to maturity would be far 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 too close so yeah they'll be moved maybe in a week or so as i was coming down here because it is quite bright and sunny i was wearing my sunglasses and it was only when I was halfway down here, I noticed I was also wearing a set of reading glasses, not over my eyes, but sort of at the top of my head. So um, I thought, actually, I better take them off. But if I take them off and put them down, I may lose them. So they're sort of both going <laughs> like that at the moment. But yes, we have had a really drying breeze, constant drying breeze for... A good few days now and that has meant more watering than usual particularly with things like the the beans that we put in particularly with the seedlings the plants like the tomatoes we've just seen that we've got on the bench here anything that's in a in a pot or in a tray that that heat coming down on it with the sun and then the the breeze going over it will really both dry out the sun will the heat of the sun will dry out the pot and that breeze will dry out the the top of the soil as well and help carry moisture away so it's really good to remember to give things a really good water when there is such a drying breeze and such warm weather too it's not so much it's it's not so bad when the the soil is sort of baked and it's still sort of damp down below but at the moment we don't have those conditions we've got the conditions where that breeze is blowing and it's both taking moisture from leaves of plants and from the surface so we need to make sure that the plants are well watered not over watered but well watered because a plant that needs water is a stressed plant and that's when we will get more um, diseases and uh, insects and aphids attacking. On the broad beans with those black fly, broad beans get black fly, you know, year in, year out. And I'm amazed that we've got so few on there. But I'm really amazed at how few ladybirds we've got. Yet they're around and about. You know, I was weeding around the lavender the other day taking out sanctfoil leaves individually and there were ladybirds on there. I was doing things over by the um, uh, chamomile. Yeah, by the chamomile. There were ladybirds on the chamomile. So the ladybirds are there. It's just they don't seem to be feeding on the aphids at the moment. Maybe, they're, maybe they've got food sources elsewhere so they're not bothering too much. But yes, you know, when we've got this breeze going, please make sure you do water your plants because they do need it. And that's all I'm going to be doing today. I've had a really good morning at my desk doing things for for her sake. I've got about another hour, maybe an hour and a half of writing to do this afternoon. I've spoken to mum, so I had a really good chat with her a short while ago. And now I'm just going to carry on watering and um, yeah, just sort of enjoying that breeze because that breeze is, is rather nice with the heat of the sun and the coolness of that breeze. It's rather nice working out there. It's sort of perfect for working. 
but uh, yeah the the plants do need that water and on that I do need to water the polytunnel today because it needs watering every day at the moment we had a work party a couple of weeks ago and the fence line was weeded because it was getting quite overgrown with uh, weeds but also with sycamore seedlings which were coming up so all of those were pulled out because of course we don't want any sycamore seeding in that uh, fence uh, hedge line that we have planted we're leaving things like dandelions and putting in things like primroses and and bluebells and you know a few daffodils that type of thing because that will just be lovely and of course give color in the spring but in terms of of trees we only want hedgerow plants in that hedge so that it softens the greenery of the the metal fence which of course is is part of keeping the site secure so yeah there we are right i'm going to go i will see you very soon for another segment of a week at the plot and i think we are going to be sowing dwarf beans or as you say in the us bush beans See you very soon. Bye. Good day. Look at this beautiful poppy that greeted me this morning. Not had one of these on the plot before. It's red and as you can see it's got those four black spots in it which fade towards the centre. Just gorgeous and the leaf, I have noticed the leaf is very different to the leaves on, on these quite different indeed most of these here are are pink I think from last year and a few weeks ago I noticed this one which I knew was going to be a different variety and sure enough it, it's going to be well it is not going to be it is there is another one oh it's come out as well there's another one in here but that doesn't have that doesn't have the black spots but the leaf is quite similar and you'll remember this is an area that i've left at the edge of the bed just to go a bit wild but yeah i hadn't noticed that that one had flowered but different again you know and well it must have flowered it's been up here have i just not noticed how very odd there's a car alarm going off and what I also noticed the other day is there is some movement where is it there in our um, beans so these are the Golden Gate beans maybe that one was a bit closer to the surface than the others because it's it's the only one though I'm noticing here a bit of cracking maybe that's ground heave from some beans coming up fingers crossed it is but I do need to do some weeding I'll get on and do that a bit later though it's just a brief morning visit to the plot today I needed to pick some lettuce for lunch we're going to have some uh, hummus which I make from uh, chickpeas from a can and we're going to have that in a pitta with salad so that will be absolutely lovely we've got some coleslaw left over from some i made yesterday so we're going to have that as well and i wanted to bring down the legs and the sort of under base of the table big metal table we were given about six months ago by a neighbor it's been at the side of our house for a very long time 
it needs to come down here because I'm donating it to the Allotment Association because I think it will work well as a sharing table. We, we've already got two plastic sharing tables, um, but I think it will work well as a sharing table, but it will also work well for big functions to put food and things like that on. And of course the gate sale that we've got later this month. And I say later this month, because of course it is now the 1st of June. It is now the start of summer. And I had to pop to the chemist this morning and I put one of my hoodies on, one of my thicker hoodies. And as I was going up the road, I was thinking how chilly it was. It'll be interesting to see what the statistics were for May because it certainly felt colder than our usual temperature. Certainly the hottest temperature that it got to across the UK was cooler than the hottest temperature I think it's got to over the past decade. And the average temperature will be interesting to, to hear because it certainly feels as though May has been a lot colder, a lot cooler than other Mays that we've had recently. The door is just shutting there. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the temperature is and I'd quite like to look back on my videos to see what the weather was like on the 1st of June in previous years because it certainly feels cooler to me already in June than it did the last few years, certainly since about 2018. You know, 2018 we had a really, really hot spell from I think about May even April right through to October and we've had long spells of hot weather over the last few years but really I'm not sure where the hot spells of weather this year are going to begin. Certainly we've had days and a, you know a few days together that have been really warm when you've been in the sunshine but yeah it definitely feels generally that the average temperature has been cooler so far this year than previous years but um, you know what that means is that things are are generally growing a little more slowly those lettuce are doing really well which is great because they're going to be feeding us uh, twice a day lunch and supper for you know a good many months to come but yeah, it just feels as though things are just a little bit cooler and a little bit slower. And oh, there's a wren. Oh, can I get it? Oh, oh, it's just so tiny. It's gone. Oh, they're just so tiny. You know, they really are. Oh, and now there's a robin on the corner of the shed. Hello, Mr. Robin. I think it felt it, <laughs> it wasn't being paid attention. As I was, um, as I came away from the lettuce bed, of course, the robin went uh, to the side of it to see if there, if I'd grubbed up any soil and that there was anything that it could eat there. And I think when it saw me talking to the wren, which I think is nesting in one of our dead hedges here, I think it thought, hey, hang on, I need a bit of attention. So it flew to the corner of the shed. Yeah, anyway, there we are. Waffle, waffle, waffle. Um, yeah, so I, I brought the legs and the sort of under base that the legs screw to and the tabletop screws to the under base, if you see what I mean. Um, I brought that down. I need to bring the tabletop down, but that's going to need either a large van or a few strong people, um, preferably tall because this table is quite large. And um, and then, yeah, the, the lettuce. But when I saw that that poppy, it was just it was just glorious because I had not seen it before. And I think that's that that's what happens sometimes, you know, like looking at the other poppy at the the end of the bed where obviously it has flowered twice already and has gone to um, a seed pod is developing now where the the two flowers were. And, um, you know, sometimes we we come down and we do things and we don't actually notice what's going on at our plots and in our gardens. You know, we like this morning, I noticed the rock rose in our back garden was out and I said to Richard, oh, the rock rose is out. And I know that Richard had stood at the kitchen window looking out into the garden for a few minutes 
like half an hour before and there's no way that that rock rose will have opened in that half an hour you know uh and he hadn't noticed he'd been looking out and not noticed we did spend a little time in our back garden last night, which was quite nice. Uh, just having a, I had a cup of tea and, and uh, Richard had finished his. So we were just sitting outside yeah, enjoying the, the quiet because it was quite quiet last night. Being half turned, there's quite a few people who are away, which is lovely because our back garden is then a little bit quieter. But anyway, I need to get home because there's things to do at home. I think I will be down later to do some weeding. If I see you then, I will see you then. If I don't, I'll say goodbye now. Bye. Good day. And I hope you're having a good Sunday morning. Well, it's Sunday morning for me anyway. And I'm having a good Sunday morning. I have been down and done a few jobs already I've mostly been down for maybe half an hour spoken to a few people you know that type of thing and done some watering but what I'm down here to do this morning is to sow dwarf French beans or bush beans as you call them in the US I'm sowing two varieties because I have the seeds rock and core these are our own saved seeds from a few years ago 2021 and I'm also sowing these which are uh, Venice I've not grown this variety before I was given these a few years ago and they went into my seed box in the fridge so I'm hoping that they will have kept well and will germinate well and I'm going to be sowing these into the same bed that we've got our climbing French beans in as you may remember, the climbing French beans are sort of tucked in from the edge. So I'm going to be sowing dwarf beans down the edge. And also at the end of one of the beds, we've got an area that there are no climbing beans in. So I'm going to be sowing that sort of, it's about half a bed fully with dwarf beans. Now with the rock and core, Again, what I have done is I've checked to see if I've got other seeds and I do have other seeds that Vivi sent me a couple of years ago. So it doesn't matter if I use up all these seeds. And with the Venice, I've not grown them before. I think they're a bog standard green French bean and uh, I'll keep a few back so that I can put those back into my seed box for growing in a future year if I like them this year and they grow well for us. What I'm also going to be doing as we've got our plant sale in just under three weeks time is I'm going to be using these modular trays to sow two seeds per module and then hopefully all of these will come up and we'll be able to sell those at our plant sale to raise funds, uh, fun, raise funds, raise money, stroke funds for the association. I've got plenty of compost, so that will be absolutely fine. What um, I also found when I came into my shed this morning: a bottle of wine. Um, I know exactly who this bottle of wine is from. It's somebody that I gave some advice to about something a good couple of weeks ago and in uh, as a thank you they given me this this bottle of wine which is really lovely. It was something about the the site and it's sort of advice I would have given to them anyway but you know it's it's nice to uh, be appreciated so that's great. I also whilst we're here um, I also came in and there was a, a note in my shed, <coughs> excuse me, and I sort of thought I knew what it was, but there was something sort of firm inside. And it's a lovely card I've received, f again from one of the tenants here, um, and just it's, it's a form that needed signing by the tenant because the tenant wants additional growing space so and she wants a specific plot so what we do is we have forms here that 
If someone wants additional growing space, they can fill in a form. If they want a particular plot, they can fill in a form so that when that person leaves that plot, they're on the, the waiting list, if you like, for that plot. And the thing is here, you can have up to one full plot per household. And um, this tenant that gave me this, they have, I think, uh, a third of a plot so they can have another two thirds of a plot and the one that they put their name down for is actually another third of a plot because they thought that that would be great for them. So I've got the form here which the uh, tenant has filled in. I will scan that into my computer later on today and then their name will go onto the waiting list which is kept electronically. So the the reason that I brought in these forms, doing these forms, is so that I being chair and other people being committee members couldn't be accused of favouritism. Because favouritism goes on at so many other sites, and I know I've discussed this before, um, but you hear it often and you know, I think it's really important that we, you know, we all we will always have our favourites on on site and, you know, our favourite people. But favouritism is something different. Um, so it's good to have forms filled in and then you can always refer back to the form and say, well, no, I'm, you, you know, if someone claims favouritism, you can go back and say, well, no, you filled in your form on the 15th of September they had already filled in a form on the 4th of April and therefore they were ahead of you in the waiting list and you have that proof so that's the way I have liked to run the uh, the committee and the association and the tenants here of course you know should our house sell and we be leaving the committee and the the next chair can do as they wish but I think it's really good to do that because it reduces, it gives you evidence that you're not being favourite when you're giving out different plots, you know, to, to different people. Um, yeah, I, I just think it's important, you know, I, we all have our favourites, but favouritism is something which is quite different. And that is the door shutting again, so I think it's time for me to get out there and start doing some sewing. I'm doing it in exactly the same way as I have done it with the climbing beans that I sewed last week. Um, and I'm going to sort of rough up the soil first to make sure that there's there's a, a good um, structure. The ground is not too hard for roots to go into when these seeds do germinate. I'm going to do that first and then I'll get sowing. And I think I'll then show you what I have done and we'll go into the poly and do some seed sowing in some of these seed trays. Down this side I've put the Venice and then all around here and up that side I've put the rock and core. I haven't, I've weeded, but I haven't weeded in the middle there. I'm just going to hoe that, so I need to get a hoe and do that. But of course, what am I going to do now? Now that I've sown these dwarf beans, I'm going to give them a really good water. So I'm going to give them a soak now, let that really get into the soil, and then in half an hour, I'm going to give them another good soak again. And then fingers crossed. So here's our cells. I'm going to sew two per cell. These are the rock and core going in. Just going down about an inch. Drop one there. I'll do that one in a minute as well. And in the grey here, I'm doing the Venice. And in fact, I've got plenty of seed of both left, even after doing that rock and core. If I can find more trays like this, I think I might sow some more. because so I think they would be good for selling at our gate sale. Now back to the rock and core.
Now they're going to get a really good water once I've taken the compost out of the tray. So that is our dwarf beans sown, both for us in the bed outside and for others in the trays in the poly here. Though I think it's going to be a bit warm in the poly. We've got just under, what have we got? What's today's date? It's the 4th. So we've got just under three weeks to the gate sale. So I think these are actually going to go outside and I'll most probably put them in the frame which has no perspex on the the top with the with the mesh on the top so i'll put them into that grow house because they don't want to get too much heat i, I you know i they're dwarf and i want them to get growing really well for the gate sale but not growing too much you know it would be great if they were about sort of four inches five inches high and beginning to bush out so yeah we will see how they do and of course if seeds don't germinate or if they germinate and get munched on then I'll be sowing another seed to replace that and it will likely mean that that seed would be later in producing any harvests but that's fine you know that's absolutely fine all of these should harvest in the next um you know two to three months so fingers crossed yeah uh Right, that's it for today, and I'm rather enjoying the view out of the poly here. I've got the um, Mizuna going to seed, and that's sort of dangling in front of me behind the camera. I've got a couple of other things going to seed in here, but tidying up the poly is going to be a job to do next week. So I will put that on my notes to do, and I will say goodbye to you now. If you've got any comments um, or suggestions, please do them. Uh, please do them. Please put them down below. And if you're on Planet Vegetaria, I'll see you for segments throughout next week. And if you watch on YouTube, I'll see you again in a week's time for another full week of A Week at the Plot. And now I'm going to leave you with the view I have here. Happy growing. Bye.